Hey there everyone, Hitesh here back again with another video. In this video, we are going to talk about the Android development. Now, the specific point that we are going to touch upon are how you can become an Android developer, what are the prerequisites before getting started as an Android developer. Also, we are going to talk about what are the free resources and paid resources available online, as well as how you can publish your app to the Android Play Store, as well as how you can earn money with those apps. So all of this coming up in this video. Stay tuned. In this channel, we talk about programming, coding, technical stuff, and pure, pure technology stuff, all the things related to the computers. So in case you are new here, consider subscribing. Now let's talk about the Android. Now I'm going to touch upon a few points that are going to be really helpful and will help you to get started as an Android developer. Now, first of all, I'm assuming that you have decided that uh, from iOS and Android, the Android is going to be my choice and all of the users that I want to hit are actually behind the Android devices. So that's why you are choosing the Android. So let's clear up that, that you have decided perfectly and no confusion at all that yes, Android is going to be my choice. Now, the great thing with the Android development is it's not that much platform oriented. Like for the iOS development, you need to have an iOS device. Of course, the iPhone is not necessary, but I iOS devices like Mac mini or your iMac really helps a lot. But Android is not like that. You can get started as an Android developer on a Windows platform or on a Mac platform. It really doesn't matter. It can be anything. Now, if you really want to get started, the first prerequisite is have a decent machine. Now, why the term decent machine, I would say that if your machine is having just say uh, two gigabytes of RAM or one gigabytes of RAM, it's not going to be much fun as an Android developer because when your simulator actually run, in case you don't know what the simulator is, you actually don't need a real hardware devices of Android to test your apps. The Android Studio, which is the platform where you write all of your code, gives you a lot of simulators that you can run and can test your apps. Now, these simulators consume a lot of memory. Now, of course, you can get started with the two gigabytes of the RAM, but your system will perform really slow and that is not a fun. So I would recommend at least four gigabytes of RAM would be really, really awesome in that case. So once you have cleared up that hurdle that you have a decent machine in case you don't have it, it's, it's a great time to invest in a machine because you are about to be a developer. All the money that you're going to be spending is going to come up because you're having a great app idea. Now, once the hardware consultancy is over, now the next hurdle is the programming language. Now, if in case you are coming up with any other programming language, Java won't be much of the hurdle. But in case you are coming for the very first time, it's a good time to get started with the Java. Now, there are plethora of uh, free and paid resources. It's completely your choice how you want to get started. But here is my tip. Don't get stuck with the usual convincing path of First learn C, then learn C++, then learn Java. No, it's not like that. You can directly and directly jump onto the Java. It's a language in itself and you can clearly and simply learn that directly. No need of other prerequisite languages. And also I would like to say that you don't need to jump into the advanced, hyper advanced level of the Java. The basics about loop, function, few object oriented tips would be completely okay and don't spend too much of the time in the Java. Otherwise, you will be getting stuck in the Java. You won't be ever moving into the Android. Now, once you have learned the Java, then the obvious step is to register as an Android developer to get started learning the Android. Now, while learning the Android, you also need to take care that there are a couple of ways to get started as a developer. Now, one of the great way and free way is to get started from developer.android.com. Now, this is an official resource by Google and to support all the Android developers. Now, of course, they will teach you all things about how you can get started as an Android studio, how you can install it, what are the requirements, how you can design a few simple apps, the, all the things about material designs, design specifications, and pretty much everything they are going to teach. But the problem is that's an official documentation and official documentation are always toughest ones to read around. They are not always so much easy because they are in so much of the detail that for a normal user, it's not easy to go around. Now, obviously, it's time consuming and it's free. So definitely get ready to invest a lot of time. 
Now, of course, there are a plethora of blogs that can teach you to design this app or that app. Of course, that's again time consuming, but of course it's free. Now, there are a couple of paid uh, resources as well. Don't worry, I'm not selling you anything, but there are a lot of paid resources, online tutorials or online courses that you can purchase and I personally recommend them. Now, I'm not gonna link any of them. I'm not gonna uh, pass any of the link to purchase them or anything, but I personally believe that that saves a lot of time. Of course, that costs a little bit of money, like uh, 30 to $50, which is much more efficient than the offline trainings. So you can also go with that. Now you can also go with a lot of books as well, but I would say going with the books is uh, secondary in my mind. First of all, I would like to go with somebody if he is teaching me live there, that would be much more awesome. Okay, so now we have cleared up the hurdle of hardware, we have cleared up the hurdle of Java, and now we are an Android developer. What is the next step? The next step is really simple to register as an Android app developer. Now it again costs you a little bit of money. I guess it's around $30 as of recording of this video. So investing a little bit amount like $30 and pay it to the Google. And there is a little bit process of verifying your addresses and uploading your IDs and everything. Once you have done that, now you will be fully able to upload your app. Now, once you have your app ready in the App Store, it's, it's not an easy process, by the way. Uh, not the App Store, actually the Play Store. Now your app is there actually. Now what is the next step? Now the next step is actually to market your app. Now an app which nobody downloads is not a good use, but in case you want to just make your portfolio or profile as an Android developer, just upload all of your apps that you have learned or you have designed. That's actually a great resume. But in case you want that your app should be hitting, then app marketing is the next step. You should be looking for the app review guys, app blog guys to make sure that your app reaches to a wider audience. And that's all about, that's the whole process of getting started as an Android developer. Now for sure in the upcoming few movies, I'll discuss more about the resources, how you can get uh, the online uh, free resources and paid resources, but definitely that's gonna come up in some of the later videos. I hope this video have uh, given you a quite a clear guidance how you can get started as an Android developer. But again, my tip would be again, don't get stuck in the path of C, C++, Java and everything. You can directly get started with the Java. Don't spend too much of the time in the Java. Directly try to expose yourself as a simple Android application. The more simpler apps you are gonna make, the more you are gonna enjoy and more you are gonna get as an experience. I would also recommend to use Firebase as your backend services because it's gonna give you much more exposure as an Android developer and that app would be much more complex. So I hope this video has helped you quite a lot in understanding how the Android everything learning process actually works. And if you like this video, make sure that you share it uh, with all of your friends and I'll catch you up in another video.